Now that we feel confident with Tableau's user interface, and in fact, we have created a couple of charts as well, let's move to the next section. In this section, we will learn about different types of charts available in Tableau. You will also study what do each of these charts do and when should you use them. By the end of this section, you will be able to create any of these charts with confidence. At the end of this section, you will be only one step away from combining these charts into beautiful dashboards. So to start off, let's have a look at different types of charts available in Tableau. The first is text tables. If you have worked with pivot tables in Excel, then these are very similar. To construct a text table, you will need at least one numeric or quantitative field and one descriptive field. By field, I'm referring to a column in our data set. Remember in Tableau's terminology, a field is a column. And when I say numeric or descriptive, I'm referring to data types, which we reviewed in the previous lecture. Text tables are good for data exploration and to check overall summary of your data. In this example, I have plotted sales data, which is a quantitative field. I have plotted it on three dimensions, that is category, subcategory, and year. It shows me a good summary. Now let's say I want to find out which category had the highest sales. Since the table is a small, it's easy to spot that highest number here is 105688 for phones in 2022. But if the table was bigger, that would have been difficult. To solve this, we have another type of chart called heat map. Heat map takes in one or two quantitative fields and one or more descriptive fields. It demonstrates how numbers vary over two dimensions. Here, I have used the same example from previous text table. Instead of showing exact numbers for sales, I have shown bubbles. The size and color intensity of the bubble corresponds to the value of sales. So for example, from this chart, it's very easily identifiable that phones in 2022 had the highest sales. The drawback with heat map is that they don't show the exact numbers. To solve this, let's go to our next chart, which is highlight tables. This chart kills two birds in one stone as it combines the features of a heat map and text table. Here, not only you can easily spot the highest or the lowest numbers, but you can also see the exact underlying number. Next, we have the pie charts. These charts show proportions of different parts to a whole. For example, here, the pie charts show proportion of each category sales for different years. Pie charts are not as popular these days. There is a growing recognition that human minds are better in interpreting bars or columns as compared to a pie. This takes us to next chart, that is bar chart or the column chart. These charts help in comparing a value of a particular measure across various dimensions. For example, this chart helps me in comparing sales of different categories for last four years. Bar or column charts are very powerful as they can accommodate several dimensions and measures. Next, we have the tree maps. Like a pie chart, they show proportion of different parts to a whole. Besides, it provides you more real estate so you can add labels and descriptions to your portions. And it can also accommodate up to two measures, which isn't very easy with the pie chart. For example, in this tree map, the size of the rectangle corresponds to the sales numbers, whereas the color of the rectangle corresponds to profit. This chart points out that although tables are a big proportion of the total sales, but the table's category is in a loss. Next, we have the line charts. These charts are helpful in showing trend of a measure over time. For example, this chart shows how sales have trended for different categories over the last four years. 
Area charts show proportions of different parts to a whole and how those proportions have changed over time. Next, we have a scatter plots. These charts show relationship between two measures. For example, here I have plotted sales on x-axis and profit on y-axis. Each bubble represents a particular subcategory. Scatter plots also help in breaking the portfolio down into clusters or divisions. For example, here I can see that these six categories have high sales and high profitability, whereas the categories in the bottom left quadrant have low sales and aren't very profitable. Moving on, we have a histogram. A histogram shows a distribution of a quantitative value at a particular point in time. For example, this chart shows that out of all the orders that were received, most orders had sales quantity of 2 to 3 units. An advancement to histogram is a box and whisker plot. These charts show distribution of a measure, but here you can also break it down by dimension. For example, here I have plotted subcategory dimension on x-axis and quantity sold on y-axis. The dots are individual months. To read this chart, let's take an example of binders. It's telling us that most of the months quantity of binders sold was in the range of 400 to 600 units. There was only one month where sale of binders was around 900 units. If this chart sounds complicated, don't worry. Once we create this chart in the upcoming lectures, it will make sense. Next, we have the bubble chart, which, like the pie chart, shows proportion of different parts to the whole, but is visually very appealing. Next, we have the bullet charts. Bullet charts are used to compare two measures. Usually, these charts are used to show sales versus the target, or sales versus the last year, etc. And then we have the maps, which can be very useful to show a value of a measure over a geographical area. For example, you can show sales by state, province, etc. These are just some of the basic and default chart types available in Tableau. Types of visuals that you can create with Tableau are unlimited. To get some inspiration, you can also visit Tableau Public. Here, many Tableau developers have posted their visualizations. It will give you an idea of what is possible in Tableau. In later section of the course, we will also create some custom visualizations. For now, let's move on to our next lecture, where we will learn to create these charts in Tableau.